here we go again with the traditional game between Fred 8Q and Tuno 11Q. This time it's a three handicap game, and uh, Black uh, won by a pretty big margin, killing a few stones in a ladder in a critical moment of the game. So let's see how it went. Now White plays a very calm move, the attach under. This is a very typical Joseki for even games, especially. So in order to confuse uh, Black early in the game and catch up for the handicap tree, why should consider a pincer instead? Now this kind of pincer, uh, usually Black will just attach in the corner at R3, then White can extend right away with a two space jump. Black will bump, White descends for a base. Black makes a, a base too and just settle the corner and in this kind of follow-up white gets to develop on uh, both sides while black simply secures the corner so uh, why should really consider this kind of joseki the, there are a few other variations that uh, both white can and black can play here for example white can honey in the corner at r2 black will pull back and then extend to space jump on the side then usually uh, black will just came uh, which is also a cap move on the stone on the right side so white extends for a base here too black will hit the vital point at p2 then settle the group this is a, a fourth variation uh, white has to, to connect under with the honey it doesn't work to play uh, o3 and try to capture because in this case black can descend so now when white wants to capture the three stones in order to save his corner, black has a ladder starting from 04 and it goes all the way to the top left corner, so white will lose the corner stones. Therefore, white has to hunt on the first line and then Atari and extend for a base again. So playing a Josek like this can be more confusing and will usually uh, put white uh, into a favorable situation here white can also think about the cut r4 but overall this kind of joseki it looks pretty good for black in conjunction with the three handicap stones so black can extend all the way to, to d4 well only regarding the local situation it's a 50 50 result but overall it feels pretty nice for black but anyway, in the original game, white plays a very calm attach and keeps the corner. So we have the classic Joseki. Here black can play a fancy move, uh, extend R13, which put more emphasis on the corner than the side in this case. And it's absolutely fine. But anyway, nothing wrong to play the basic Joseki. So white invades Sansan. Now here white can think about approaching from the outside and then invade the corner well playing the sun sun invasion right away it's modern and it works in handicap games too uh, black can just block on the right side at r16 because he already got the extension in place at r11 and then either nobi to take sente and play a big point next or black can play hane and even double hane in this case so when white atari captures one stone black will take the two stones in the corner this is a standard pattern ah i jump ahead a little bit too much here so black block the other way in general it's okay to block the corner in the direction of the extension but in this case it doesn't matter so much because black can still grab center like he did with the nobi and then extend in the top but the extension in the top can be all the way to k16 this feels a little bit over uh, well not really over concentrated but a bit too conservative it's very close to the wall and far away from d16 so back to the actual game why split the left side why can also uh, play an approach at c14 then if black pincers uh, white will consider a double hakari to make it a bit more confusing then just simply invade the corner uh, like this the Josekis are much more simpler this way 
overall black still looks good in in the game so white has a lot to to work to to catch up for the this uh the handicap difference so black decided to play very conservative again at f3 on the left side black can choose between attacking c7 c8 or c12 c13 and it's usually good to decide where to attack from because if you allow white play a move on the left side then white can approach the corner and then also approach the bottom so like this white gets to extend both directions and it's a very easy way to develop the left side so in the actual game black defends the top that's very good and white slides white should immediately extend at c7 when uh, white decides to slide in the corner and black simply blocks at c17 white has to come back and protect at d12 to prevent the invasion at c12 this is a pretty uh normal shape and it's also it, it looks very ideal for white so if white simply extends c7 now the options are still available and open in the top left corner so i can invade the sun sun or attach uh, c16 or slide b16 so he has all these options to choose later so now white slides uh, black simply secures the corner white extends again and here black should consider the invasion at c12 in order to punish white for not defending d12 now if white simply plays the attach and tries to connect uh, up or down uh, black will leave and take away all the territory on the left side and white has to go back and protect his cutting points here black can play a peep as a probe and then extend on the bottom side so overall this would be quite nice for black so black simply protected the corner here ah oops on the left side then why should still go back to d12 or play a one space jump at e14 in order to uh, protect against the c12 invasion now white has this cover Well, white extended at k3, but this still leaves the invasion at m3. And black defends the top. In order to protect the top, it's better to go on the fourth line. So alternate the third line with the fourth line. Otherwise, the position will be just flat. This way, there are uh, too many moves on the third line for black. So it's a bit low. Now white plays the Kima on the right side, but it's a bit dangerous. Because black has a stone at r11 so he can use it to cut white right away uh, for black it works to play r13 cut kema at the waist and then just cut directly at q14 then play the counter atari and atari from behind now if this happens when white cuts black captures the core and white is in atari so white needs to protect or fight the core then black will extend this way black gets a very nice uh, wall uh, in the top so that's a bit tough for white another way for black to to punish this kema is to play hana in the corner then continue with kosumitsuke at r14 now here uh black can cut at s15 and the sequence is pretty much forced so now when white saves the corner with the atari black will just uh, sacrifice one stone and connect on the outside to chase the two mark stones which are heavy and completely floating into black's moyo well if uh, white decides to connect on the outside black will capture the corner and then white is still on the run in the middle so this would be a collapse why doesn't want that happen <clears throat> therefore um, white's move at q13 was a little bit too much locally why should just play kosumi r13 that's a stronger formation but in fact, why should still think about jumping e14 to limit the moyo in the top and also prevent the invasion on the left side. So black jumps along. Now white plays a move to reduce the moyo in the top, but this can be separated from the left side. So still one space jump is really bad. Black played very well with fighting spirit, attach, then go up. 
Yeah, white is playing light, trying to, to reduce the top more. In fact, it's a bit safer for white to keep some distance, j14 instead. Now if black turns, white will uh, get ahead and on the cap to attack very severe. White has a shoulder hit and attach and this way white can make a sabaki uh, very easy. So the group in the top will be safe now. But playing too close to thickness, it's a bit dangerous. Well, black doesn't have to protect or try to attack from the top where he's already strong. Black should either turn or play a move to uh, lean on the left side stones in order to get stronger and then counter attack with a cap. So this way, both white stones are still thin and under pressure. Now white has to run out and black can keep chasing here. So back to the original game. Yeah, white plays away. Uh, before playing this kind of pip, which is a fine move, white should uh, consider 08. 08 prepares the invasion at R8. So usually black would just secure the right side and then white plays another pip at P6. So this is a good combination to have the 1 2 exchange in place and then play away to increase the moyo. White is looking for a nice territory in the center this way. Now if uh, white doesn't, uh, if black doesn't respond to 08 to, to secure the right side but tries to separate instead, white can just jump in at R8 and R8 will create mi between connecting under S6 or connecting outside at Q8. So if black separates, white will just link and then black has to link under but it's very painful being on the second line. Now if black covers, white can link under at S5 and takes away the profit or the territory uh, black had on the, on the right side. So that potential is going to be erased. That's why it's good to play this kind of fancy approach from the center and then follow up by the peep. So peep right away and then the shoulder hit to expand the moyo, very good move. Artistic also. Usually here to this kind of shoulder hit, uh, black should block at g3 or even came on h2. The block at f4 is an option too. So in general, uh, you want to play where your opponent wants to play. So for example, if black comes in the middle, white is happy to block a g3 because it kind of hurts the corner, so black needs to protect again, go down or up. So for black it's not so interesting to see white block a g3, which means black should take the, the g3 point right away, and when white pulls back, uh, jump in the center to reduce the potential moya. Well, a move like this to separate the top, it's not bad either, but it's fine to react to, to moves like g4. <clears throat> For white, it's better to play more flexible, so one space jump. And then just sacrifice the f15 stone and play some light shapes uh, in the center. Well, push one time here would be good because black never turn in center. Then maybe play a tsuke to make it more confusing for, for black and reduce the top this way and jump out for a nice shape in the middle. Playing just nobi like that, it feels heavy for white. Well, black goes for a one point, a one stone capture, but black should actually turn because the stone in the top, it may die on a larger scale. Either came out like this or push along and the stone is already captured. Or just play moves like R13 to separate the right side. And this way indirectly attack the mark stones in the top. So black has the upper hand in this position. White jumps very nice to connect to the right. Black again plays a bit too conservative but this move is proper. Because that's where white wants to go next. So if black plays away. White might use the shoulder hit and push again to reduce the top even more. So it makes sense for black to block this way. Mm, this attach it's a bit too much. Just block g3 and keep center. Then jump in the center. But now a move like 08 it's not really threatening much on the right side. Because uh, r8 is not going to work anymore. 
So this move, <coughs> probably black is not going to protect here anymore, but play away, come in the center. And when white tries r8, black can separate, but honey hunter doesn't work to connect. So black is fine. So back to the original game. Attach, very aggressive. Then cut. And uh, black can push first a g3 and then capture the stone at e2 because now it creates a cutting point into white's formation. So white has to come back and fix his cut. If black just captures, white is happy to attack on the outside and the formation is quite strong for white and center too. So white can play away. Now, yeah, this jump to, to go for the center makes sense. But of course, uh, black can reduce from the right side. Black can play a peep, like uh, P, P4 threatening the push and cut, and then jump along with Kema. So if this happens, uh, black can connect, or just cover, because already black is reducing the bottom side. All right, so black attaches here to get into the center, and damage the left side, white covers, that's natural, cross cut, and extend. It's very good to extend when cross cut. So black plays Atari, go out, and here white can cut first. Now if white plays Atari and black connects, white can continue with the ladder and capture the stones on the left side. So uh, black will probably separate in this case, give up the stone and then capture the one on the left side. Maybe that's why white just blocked. So black turns, that's good, and white plays away. White can just Atari here once. So if black plays a double Atari and white captures a stone, white doesn't need to play in the center again. And later it works to play a uh, squeeze. So when black jumps here, for example, white has the squeeze on the left side in center, then play away. Playing this kind of move, it's a net, but it's got there and it still leaves RG. Black can cut and extend and try to damage the left side. So black tries to come inside the bottom moyo with this kind of move, but it's actually better to play a jump like M6 to stay connected to the right stones. This move is a bit deep, so I can counter attack. I could play a one space jump or a Kema to try to come from behind and then Hane and extend, oops, like this. So this way white is pushing black into the thickness on the left side in this direction. So this way black will jump out, very good. Now cap, uh, here white can play a peep first force black into a heavy shape and then continue with a cap or a boshi. Black goes out. It was to cut right away. Hane, then Atari from the right, uh, from the above and connect. So black is still in trouble. Push and cut, okay. Now black can play an Atari from below and then extend to the left. So here it gets a bit tougher for white to, to kill the group. This way it seems that black is going to die inside and it was supposed to. Very natural move to surround these four stones. Then instead of push and cut, white can just cover honey once then extend or cut first and then extend now when black plays atari white has the counter atari and no be up so the group is all surrounded and no eye shape yet when black plays an attach here white will simply connect under this push and cut can work too but this is a, a problem Why should actually just no be here? So after the cut, when um, black played the honey, 
why it has to connect with an ugly shape the double empty triangle and when black tries to capture why it has atari atari again and take the three stones but in this case black can also damage a bit so let's go back a few moves well that way white still captures uh, most of the original invasion but simply no BK gate then black will probably stay connected with a hanging connection but here white will simply answers uh, simply block then black will push out white can block again with honey so it's gonna be difficult for black to escape now well the best tactic is honey and extend and when atari atari from behind and pull back then it's all done so this was a very critical moment of the game where white messed up big time and black got away by killing lots of stones so on this atari black has to pay attention uh, white should check the leather and instead of connecting white has to honey here so now black will capture two stones and white will also compensate taking three stones in the middle well black is alive now but at least white doesn't lose so many uh, stones in that area so now we have a leather and the leather goes in the right direction because black has a stone at p11 so there's no way out for white it's just going to lose more stones every stone lost in a leather it's worth like seven points value so once black capture here there is no way for uh, white to come back the game has been pretty much decided well this is slow white can atari capture and then no need to play another move in the middle white it's already connected and in fact it's very difficult to continue this game this looks like a very desperate move it's not going to connect to s7 and it's very difficult to connect to the right so black can just play s12 threatening the cut and s9 dies inside uh, by default a jump here doesn't help much a jump out also doesn't uh, create twice so that was just bait to create some magic and play a few forcing moves well black knows he's ahead by a lot so he answers everything I can continue with Hane on the first line in center <clears throat> but it still won't affect the outcome of the game and here the right way to protect it's actually S17 it can be uh, important for the follow-up on the side but it, it doesn't really matter much black can connect with a hanging connection at l2 to make a few extra points black it's ultra solid especially that he's way ahead now this move is no need uh, why can Hane in the corner or protect in the middle so when black plays Atari Atari that's pretty much it and if black goes Atari from the second line and then Hane in the corner uh, white is safe but the best move right now it's resign uh, why can play the Hane and it's fine and connected so the game could have been way closer if white kills the bottom stones instead of dying in that important fight in the middle well better luck next time <laughs>